Good afternoon, people watching Miss 65, Lisa Boyce. I'm going to give you the Gospels in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, which is the most important thing you can do now. Christ spilled his blood for our past, present, and future sins, was buried, and rose again on the third day, according to Scripture. That's how we're saved. That's how we're kept saved. It is grace through faith in Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works, at least any man should boast. Let me tell you something about works. Works is something that we are saved for. Works is not something we're saved by. And we're not kept saved by works. God has a long job list for people after you get saved. And you can take any one of them. But you're not kept saved by that. You're saved by your believing in what Christ did at the cross. Your faith lies in the blood of Jesus. It is grace through faith in Christ alone. It is grace that God gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him, believe, will not perish but have eternal life. That's the gospel. That's how we're saved. That's how we're kept saved. Someone wrote me a comment yesterday and said, if you believe that your sins were nailed at the cross and you're sad, you're mistaken. Needless to say, that person is gone. But those are just a few of the comments that come on there. Ridiculous as they may. But they're coming out more and more because we're at the last seconds of the last day. Someone said that uh, we don't know the hour. Oh yeah, we do know the hour because we're living in the hour right now. We just don't know the exact time of the rapture. But we know we're in the hour. Absolutely. You're in the hour. Now, what do you do? The moment you accept Christ as Savior, why do you need a Savior? Because you're a sinner. You and I don't deserve grace. Grace is something that God gives us that we don't deserve. Mercy is something that God don't give us that we do deserve. So, we're saved, sealed, until the day of redemption. If you come against once saved, always saved, you have a problem. Because you're saying that the blood of Jesus was not enough. So you're saying by adding works to it and saying, oh God, I repented of this. I did this. I did this. You're putting the focus back on you and what you could do. Christ already took care of it. That's why when you accept Christ as Savior, You've automatically repented. Repentance, it's a change of mind that happens the moment you accept Christ as Savior. You've changed your mind about how you felt once about God, and you've changed your mind about sin. You no longer like it. That's why it's not enough emphasis on the Holy Spirit. Uh, no one talks about the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit changes you the moment you believe and the moment you accept Christ as Savior. Maybe not all at once, but the Holy Spirit changes you. The Holy Spirit guides you. The Holy Spirit leads you. The two things that nobody speaks enough about is the blood and the Holy Spirit. The only one I've heard that spoke more about the blood and the Holy Spirit is Robert Breaker. That's it. Nobody else that I have heard of speaks more about the blood and the Holy Spirit. Our faith lies in the blood. Therefore, when our faith lies in the blood, the Holy Spirit comes in and indwells in you. That, that, that is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's not taught or spoken about in a brick and mortar church, especially Pentecostal ones. I got to give you this article here. Um, Lapide tells Rivlin, I have succeeded in forming a coalition with Bennett. That means that Netanyahu is out. Bennett Abbas finalized coalition deal. New governing coalition has been formed and is prepared to replace Netanyahu. Now, what I got earlier was Rivlin is going to be replaced. Isaac Herzog, elected 11th president of State of Israel by wide margin. 
Now I got this. Netanyahu is going to be replaced. A new governing coalition has been formed and is prepared to replace Prime Minister Netanyahu. Um, opposition leader Yair, Yair Lapid officially uh, informed President Rivlin and Knesset Speaker Levine late Wednesday night. Interesting. It says, I commit to you, Mr. President, that this government will work to serve all the citizens of Israel, including those who aren't members of it, will respect those who oppose it, and do everything in its power to unite all parts of Israel, Israeli society. Lapid told Rivlin about 11.35. Their time. Yamana leader Nap Naftali Bennett, Chairman Masur Abbas, signed an agreement at a meeting on Wednesday night at a hotel in the first coalition deal ever signed by an Arab party. Abbas had added last-minute demands on Wednesday following multiple conversations with Prime Minister Netanyahu after Netanyahu offered to cancel a law enforcing fines on illegal Arab building, Abbas demanded the same from the unity government being formed. This, this is serious. So now, in this article right here on the Jerusalem Post that just came out, Netanyahu is, <laughs> bless you, Netanyahu is out. Now, the one that I got this morning Jewish Agency Chairman Isaac Herzog will be the 11th president of the state of Israel after he received 87 votes from the MKs in the secret ballot vote in the Knesset. Herzog's op opponent, Israel Prize winning educator Miriam Peretz, received 27 votes. Had she been elected, Peretz would have become Israel's first woman president. It's a very large victory in any presidential election in history. Herzog will take over from President Rivlin when his term ends July 9th. Things are heating up. No, they're not heating up. They're hot. They're red hot right now. These two people are gone. And from what I understand, the guy who's replacing Netanyahu is just like Sleepy Joe. So, of course, they're going to agree to a two-state solution. I'm going to say this. I will be highly surprised if we're not out of here by the end of this year. I will be. I'm not setting a date. By no means. I'm just making a comment. Take it how you want, but I will be very surprised. I really don't think we're going to make it out of here past this year with the way things are happening. This is happening at such a rate of speed that it's just, it's, it, it's unbelievable. This is happening at such a rate of speed. Now, let me tell you what else I got earlier today. Iran's largest warship catches fire and sinks in the Gulf of Oman. It says the largest warship in the Iranian Navy caught fire and later sink Wednesday in the Gulf of Oman under nuclear circumstances. The latest calamity to strike one of the country's vessels in recent years amid tensions in the West. The blaze began around 2.25 a.m. and firefighters tried to contain it. The FARS news agency reported, but their efforts failed to save the 207 meter, which is 679 foot uh, crog. That's what they call it which was used to resupply other ships in the fleet at sea and conduct training exercises. 
State media reports 400 troops on board fled the vessel and some 20 suffering inju injuries. The vessel sank near the Iranian port of Jask, some 790 miles southeast of Tehran, on the Gulf of Oman, near the Strait of Hermos. The narrow mouth of the Persian Gulf. Satellite photos from Planet Lab, Inc., analyzed by the Associated Press, showed the ship off Jask with no sign of a fire as of late Tuesday. Iranian officials offered no cause for the fire aboard the ship. They, uh, though they said an investigation had become, it comes as a series of mysterious explosions that began 2019 targeting commercial ships in the Gulf of Oman. The U.S. Navy later accused Iran of targeting the ships with uh, limpet mines, timid explosives typically attached by divers to a vessel's hull, I think underneath the boat. Iran denied that, though the U.S. footage, U.S. Navy footage showed Revolutionary Guard members removing one unexploded limpet mine from a ship. The attacks... <laughs> the oh boy, I just felt something. But you know what? Maybe this was what I I was feeling, but I doubt it, because I kept saying something was going to happen. This is just the beginning. The attacks came amid heightened tensions between the U.S. and Iran after President Donald Trump unilaterally withdrew America from Tehran's uh, nuclear deal with world powers. Negotiations on saving the accord continue in Vienna. In April, an Iranian ship called the MV Saviz, believed to be a guard base anchored for years in the Red Sea of Yemen, was targeted in an attack suspected to have been carried out by none other than Israel. It escalated a year-long shadow war in the Middle East between the two countries, raging from strikes in Syria, assaults on ships, attacks on Iran's nuclear program. The Israeli Prime Minister's office did not respond to, an request, to re a request for a comment as of today. It's Thursday over there now, or close to it. State TV um, and semi-official news agencies on Wednesday referred to the Karag named after the island that serves as the main oil terminal for Iran as a training ship. I'm going to link this article in the description box too, and I'm going to link both of these Jerusalem Post articles in there about Revlin and Netanyahu. Something is happening, and I have been feeling this for a while, for a few, at least a few days now. I've been having weird dreams very weird dream. Someone just wrote me and said they uh, had a dream about Mexico had a major earthquake. And I believe that's going to happen. But the dreams I've been having mostly are being shown what's going to happen during the tribulation. And it's going to be horrible. I'm going to link both of these in the description box. If anything else comes up, I will be back on. But um, you need to know what's happening. In the meantime, um, any articles that come up, I'm going to post them. Any articles that I can't repeat on here, I'm going to post them in the, my blog. So, in the meantime, I'll be back later with the next video. Thank you.